Lesson 54, Instinct or Cleverness. We'll talk about insects in this lesson. First, listen and try to answer this question. Was the writer successful in protecting his peach tree? Why not? 作者成功地保护了他的桃树吗? 为什么没有? We have been brought up to fear insects. We regard them as unnecessary creatures that do more harm than good. We continually wage war on them, for they contaminate our food, carry diseases, or devour our crops. They sting or bite without provocation. They fly uninvited into our rooms on summer nights, or beat against our lighted windows. We live in dread not only of unpleasant insects like spiders or wasps, but of quite harmless ones like moths. Reading about them increases our understanding without dispelling our fears. Knowing that the industrious ant lives in a highly organized society does nothing to prevent us from being filled with revulsion when we find hordes of them crawling over a carefully prepared picnic lunch. No matter how much we like honey, or how much we have read about the uncanny sense of direction which bees possess, we have a horror of being stung. Most of our fears are unreasonable, but they are impossible to erase. At the same time, however, insects are strangely fascinating. We enjoy reading about them, especially when we find that, like the praying mantis, they lead perfectly horrible lives. We enjoy staring at them, entranced as they go about their business, unaware, we hope, of our presence. Who has not stood in awe at the sight of a spider pouncing on a fly, or a column of ants triumphantly bearing home an enormous dead beetle? Last summer, I spent days in the garden watching thousands of ants crawling up the trunk of my prize peach tree. The tree has grown against a warm wall on a sheltered side of the house. I am especially proud of it, not only because it has survived several severe winters, but because it occasionally produces luscious peaches. During the summer, I noticed that the leaves of the tree were beginning to wither. Clusters of tiny insects called aphids were to be found on the underside of the leaves. They were visited by a large colony of ants which obtained a sort of honey from them. I immediately embarked on an experiment which, even though it failed to get rid of the ants, kept me fascinated for 24 hours. I bound the base of the tree with sticky tape, making it impossible for the ants to reach the aphids. The tape was so sticky that they did not dare to cross it. For a long time, I watched them scurrying around the base of the tree in bewilderment. I even went out at midnight with a torch and noted with satisfaction and surprise that the ants were still swarming around the sticky tape without being able to do anything about it. I got up early next morning, hoping to find that the ants had given up in despair. Instead, I saw that they had discovered a new route. They were climbing up the wall of the house and then onto the leaves of the tree. I realized sadly that I had been completely defeated by their ingenuity. The ants had been quick to find an answer to my thoroughly unscientific methods. So was the author successful in protecting his peach tree? He wasn't because the ants are too clever. They attack the tree from the top. The author tells us about this experience in the second paragraph. In the first paragraph, he talks about the mixed feelings human beings have about insects, fear and fascination. Our fear of insects is so deep-rooted that however hard we try, we cannot dispel it. Yet our fascination is not less strong. We enjoy reading about insects and observing the insects because of their cleverness, which we don't possess and we don't understand. As the title indicates, 
We don't even know whether it's out of instinct or out of cleverness. Right, now we'll start looking at some language points. We regard them as unnecessary creatures that do more harm than good. This expression, do more harm than good, is often used when drawing a conclusion to a comparison of something's harm and good. We can also say, certain things have more disadvantages than advantages, or the disadvantages outweigh the advantages. I'll give you one more example. Modernizing historic buildings can often do more harm than good. We continually wage war on them. Wage war on somebody or something. It's a slightly formal use, saying fighting a war with. Look at this example. The president needs the Congress permission to wage war. 总统要是宣战的话，需要得到国会的批准。The police are waging a war on or against crime. They sting or bite without provocation. Provocation means being made angry or annoyance. For example, people under provocation can react in unexpected ways. 人们在被惹怒的时候。反应可能是各种意想不到的方式。His letter is just a provocation to see if you really cared, which means his letter is just trying to provoke you. The industrious ant. Industrious means hardworking or diligent. For example, every assistant is expected to be industrious and efficient. Being filled with revulsion, revulsion means disgust. Look at this example. She expressed her revulsion at or against or towards boxing. Notice the prepositions can be at or against or towards. We find hordes of them. Hordes means a large, noisy, and excited crowd. We can also use the expression to describe people. For example, there were halls of fans waiting outside the stadium. When they heard that the exhibition was free, they came in halls. In halls means in large groups. We have read about the uncanny sense of direction which bees possess. Uncanny means mysterious. And strange, so the synonym can be eerie. For example, it was uncanny that what a fortune teller had predicted turned out to be true. They are impossible to erase. Erase means to destroy or remove completely. For example, time has caused his memories to fade, but. It hadn't erased them, which means they did not completely disappear. All trace of the negotiation has been erased from the record. 记录中已经把关于这次谈判的所有痕迹都消除了。Notice be erased from. I usually write the draft in pencil so that I can erase anything that I want to change. Erase. Here means to get rid of with eraser, 擦除 Eraser is often used by British people, and in American English, it would be rubber. 橡皮在英国英语中用 eraser， 美语中 rubber. They lead perfectly horrible lives. Perfectly here is used to emphasize. Meaning extremely horrible lives. Let's look at more examples. As a couple, they're perfectly suited. Perfectly here means completely suited. 
Your worries are perfectly understandable or perfectly reasonable. Here, perfectly is used to emphasize understandable and reasonable. His answer is perfectly ridiculous, which means extremely ridiculous. We enjoy staring at them, entranced as they go about their business. Entranced is a slightly poetic expression, meaning fascinated. For example, the children sat silent in front of the television, entranced by the film. As they go about their business, go about one's business means they continue in their usual way. Go about is a fixed expression, meaning begin to do something. For example, how can we go about solving this problem? How can we start to solve this problem? In spite of the attack, many people seem to be going about their business as if nothing had happened, which means many people still stick to their old habits as if nothing had happened. Who has not stood in awe at the sight of a spider? Stand in awe means feel awed. Awe is a kind of mixed feeling, respect mixed with fear and surprise, 敬畏. For example, the sight of Father Christmas filled the children with awe. You cannot help but stand in awe of such a stunning performance. You cannot help feeling awed by such a stunning performance. A column of ants. Here, a column of means a line of ants. I'll give you more examples of column. People hid inside their houses as columns of tanks rolled down the streets. Columns of tanks. Nelson's column is a famous monument in Trafalgar Square in London. Column here means the column of statue, 雕像的柱子,就是伦敦的特拉法尔加广场上内尔逊的那个雕像. A column of smoke rose from the chimney. Here, the shape of smoke looks like a column, 一柱烟从烟囱升起. Add up the numbers in the left-hand column, please. The left-hand column, 左手的那一列, 这里的列是书页中相对于行的概念. It has survived several severe winters. Severe, when being used to describe the weather, means extremely hot or extremely cold or dry, very unpleasant. So severe winters means extremely cold winters. Look at one more example. It was the severest winter we have ever had, the most unpleasant winter. He's suffering from a severe headache. Here, severe means a very serious headache. In parts of Africa, there is a severe food shortage. Again, the food shortage is very serious. Her teacher is so severe that she is afraid to ask him any question. Here, severe means very harsh. Yanlide is used to refer to a person. They were visited by a large colony of ants. A large colony of ants means a large group of ants. A colony of insects or animals or plants of the same type means they live together. For example, a colony of bacteria. And we can also use a colony to describe a group of people of the same interest living together. For example, an artist's colony. We know the basic meaning of colony. Australia and New Zealand are former British colonies. I 
I watch them scurrying around the base of the tree. Scurry means move very quickly with small or short steps. For example, the mouse scurried across the floor and disappeared through a hole. We can also use scurry to describe people. We scurried for shelter when the storm began, means we hurried in order to find a shelter. I noted with satisfaction and surprise that the ants were still swarming around the sticky tape without being able to do anything about it. With satisfaction and surprise, why did he note with both these feelings? He was satisfied because his trick worked. The ants were still unable to find a way out. But he was also amazed, surprised, that they were so insistent, still working on it. They were still swarming around. Swarm especially is used to describe bees or insects, means come in large group. If we use it to describe people, it refers to a large group of people go together around. For example, photographers swarmed around the princess. I had been completely defeated by their ingenuity. Ingenuity means cleverness. Its adjective is ingenious. Notice that in English, there's another adjective looking very much similar to ingenious. It's pronounced as ingenuous. The meaning of the two adjectives are quite different. Ingenious means clever, intelligent. For example, he is an ingenious painter, a talented painter. Ingenuous means sincere and honest, 诚实的. For example, it was ingenuous of you to ask a stranger to look after your luggage. It was too simple-minded of you. We have learned before that in English, there are various ways of expressing negative meanings. In this text, there appear several negative structures. Let's look at what they mean. They sting or bite without provocation. They fly uninvited into our rooms. Notice both structures serve the function of clauses. Without provocation is actually the same as they sting or bite when nothing provokes them. The second, uninvited, means they fly into our rooms with nobody inviting them. Knowing that the industrious ant lives in a highly organized society does nothing to prevent us from being filled with revulsion. Does nothing to prevent us actually means is not helpful at all to prevent us from having this kind of feeling. Who has not stood in awe at the sight of a spider pouncing on a fly? Although we see the word not, the negative word, this is actually expressing a positive meaning. This kind of question is called a rhetorical question. It actually means everybody stood in awe at such a sight. No matter its instinct or cleverness, some special abilities or skills of insects, as well as of animals, have long been studied by some scientists. This subject of science is called bionics. Its purpose is to study the biological systems of the animals and insects, so that men can copy them for their own use. Coming back to the author himself, he played this little game purely out of curiosity. He had some fun, but it might be quite a cruel event in the ants' world. So this reminds me of what Shakespeare once said. As flies to wanton boys are we to the gods, they kill us for their sport. 
。神们看待我们，就像顽童看待苍蝇，他们杀害我们，给自己开心。Right. So much on this story and the topic. See you next time.